Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hope you had a good weekend. So, um, I should I should say since we're here, uh, I got an email saying that because you know half half of last week the university was closed due to the hurricane. The calendar has closed. Uh, the calendar has changed. Uh, now, well, I don't know what it was like before. But now the the day to drop classes and to change your classes has changed. Um, so we'll get into that if you're interested. So um, what are we doing? We are learning what a function is, remembering what a function is. We know what a function is because we all got 76% on the Alex test. And Presumably to do that, we had to know what a net function was. So let me remind you. Uh, so, so, um, A function is a way of assigning uh, assigning uh, an output to every input. For example, For example, take a number, um, add to multiply by three, and subtract one. So that is a, a function. Oh, well, that's some great spelling. Assign, assign name. So, do I know what this function means? I know what this function means. If I, I know if I take the number four, what I'm supposed to do is add two, uh, multiply by three, and then subtract one. So that's six times three is 18 minus one, 17. So this is the function that sends the number four to the number 17. <clears throat> um, so sometimes uh, functions have formulas. Um, so I could say that the number x goes to the number x plus 2 times 3 minus 1. I could say that the function f of x is x plus 2 times 3 minus 1. Uh, I could say that y is x plus two, x plus two times three minus one. So here, here I mean that x is the, is the input and y is the output. Um, so, So why do I do that? Um, no reason. So chat message. Well, it's eight. The jumper he's working on is nine one and not eight thirty one. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> You're right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, can I move to the correct one?
کنیم ما هایده یورو چرد کنی سو لایک سو بکنیم این کافی Alright, well, I am working on on nine one. Uh, after the class, I'll change the name to it. I'm going to go. I'm going to delete eight thirty one, so nobody is confused. Oh boy. Oh no. Oof. Okay, there's three people here. I'll go to Moodle later and change the links to the correct one. Okay, so um we like to we like to um, represent functions like this you like to represent functions like this you've probably seen this a lot um and it's sort of we do it so often that we i don't know if you don't say anything people think that x is always going to be the input of a function and y is going to always going to be the input of a function but if i write if I write this, this is the exact same thing. Um, nobody's forcing me to call to call the input of a function x. The letter x doesn't I mean doesn't mean anything. It's just a placeholder for the thing I'm supposed to plug in. So if I, for example, <coughs> well. <coughs> If I wanted to know what f of seven is, um, well, I just need to go look at the the letter that's the input. So if I wanted to answer the question, value of f at seven. Then the answer I will find by uh, by taking the, the input letter The input is and replace it by seven. Or maybe substitute. So, oh no. So, I will go F of seven. is well wherever i see an x or wherever i see an a i write a seven and this is whatever it is 26. <clears throat> okay so the main takeaway is that both these formulas represent the exact same thing because the only thing that matters is that when 7 comes in, 26 comes out, and when 4 comes in, 17 comes out. As long as for the same inputs I get the same outputs, um, I'm talking about the same function. Um, this is the exact same thing again. So Oh, 
используем. Anonymous Liger join. So sad. Saddest animal in the world. Cat. Hands open the cat. So the main difference between f of x and y is that f of x is explicit while y is implicit. I'm not sure what you mean there. Uh, the, there's, I mean, there's no difference. They uh, they all mean the same. And I mean, this is sort of, I, I'm not sure this is a function, but when we write this, we tend to mean that y is f of x. And if, we're, if we mean that, then this is also the same. I think my answer is that there's not that much of a difference. Any other questions? No. All right. Uh, next slide. So um there are so so far i've described a function um with a table what is a table with a formula and with a sentence um but i can also use a table So, what was my function? My function was uh, x plus 2 times 3 minus 1. x plus 2 times, times 3 minus 1. Um, so, if I go like this, and I go, uh, what's f of zero? f of zero is um, pi, f of one is eight, f of two is uh, four times three, 11, f of three, 14, f of negative one is two. <clears throat> So this table, you know, if it was if it wasn't just four values, if I or five, if I knew how to, if I knew how to fill it in for every number, this is also the exact same function. So, so that's three ways I have of representing a function. So, let me say it again: they're all the same. They're all um, uh, a function. It's not a. It's not a formula. It's just a rule that says you give me a number, I give you another. If um, if I, if you give me if you give me the formula, I know that if you give me zero, I need to return pi. And if you give me a table, I also know that if you give me zero, I need to return pi. And that makes them the same function. In calculus, normally you see functions even by formulas, but that's just because calculus is easy. Uh, in real life, you don't see nature doesn't give you formulas. Did I hear a microphone on? I guess, I guess not. So the last way I have to give you a function um, we can use a graph to represent a function. So How do we use a graph to represent the function? Um, so 
from this table, I have the points um, the graph of a function f with f is made of the points of the form x f of x. So I guess, first of all, let me remind you what coordinates are. The point, uh, the point two, three is the point that has, so the x coordinate, normally we draw on the horizontal axis. So the point two, three is this point over here, which is at a distance two from the vertical axis and a distance three. Did I just do one, three, three? Oh, yeah. Distance three from the horizontal axis. <clears throat> so if I write x comma f of x, that means that x could be anything. And then the second coordinate is going to be given by applying the function. So that means that the graph of, of my example, the graph of this example contains um, the points. Well, so now I'm going to day. Um, if I make x equals zero, I get the point zero and then f of zero. I know what f of zero is. Um, f of zero is here on the table. So I go through the point zero five. And if I make x equals one, I get the point uh, one a to eleven. Um, and I can make, for example, if I make x equals to one half, I I have so what do I have? What do I have? That's a question for you. Oh, fractions. At eight in the morning. Not even at eight in the morning. Oh my god, we got we got a fraction now. It's six and a half, right? Six and a half. I don't actually know. Let's see. So how do I find f of one half? Well, wherever wherever there is an x in in the formula, I write a one half. So that's going to be one half plus three minus one. And, uh, what? No. What? You really we make so many mistakes in math, just copying things wrong. <clears throat> um, so that is going to be 5 halves times 3 minus 1. And that's going to be 15 halves minus, uh, minus 1. And that's going to be 13 halves, which is indeed uh, six and a half. Great job. I think it's, uh, I don't know who that was. So. so many, so many windows. I don't see anything in my screens. Okay. 
so, so I still have room to try to draw this. No, I don't. I'm gonna instead of drawing this, I'm gonna do one better and tell the computer to draw it. X plus two. So this is a website that I found just googling something like draw a function online. As far as I can tell, it's free. Um, and, and it's really, it's really good, really easy to use. I really like it. <clears throat> so, um, if I write here a function, it just draws a graph for me. So why am I doing all the stuff I was doing? Well, the answer to that is to understand what this is doing for me. So, um, so, well, this is a graph. So this is um, what this is doing is for every point that you could think of here, it's drawing the it's drawing the point with x coordinate with that x coordinate and y coordinate given by the this formula. For example, uh, it goes through point zero five. So now can I? Scribble here. So, well, again, right. So this is the point zero f of zero. This is the point one f of one. Um, <clears throat> and and basically anywhere I click. Here, there's other points. For example, the if uh, it tells me all the points in the graph. So, if I go find negative one, um, f of negative one is two. Uh, Oh, there you go. So, um, that's all the points on the graph. So this goes, this works the other way. Uh, if I have a graph, This is not really, is my, did I freeze my computer? No, I can still see myself move. Oh, I was just typing nowhere. If I have a graph, I can also use it to get values of a function. So I was just using a function to get a graph, but I can go the other way. For example, if I, if I have this graph and I know that there's, I have this point here, this would tell me that f of negative 2.3 is negative 1.9. So let's do, let's do another function. Is there? Oh, there you go. So here's a random function that you've never heard of. My point is, I'm gonna, this function, we don't know how to compute, um, but uh, this thing drew the graph for me. So, I don't know, a formula or a table. So, um, so what is f of one? Well, I can use the graph to figure it out. What's f of one, anyone? Oh, 
I'm on point 91. Who? Anyone want to take a better guess? Maybe that was the perfect guess. I don't know. I was thinking more like 0. 0.81. 0. 0.81. Yeah, I was thinking something around there. Uh, all right, I'm going to play this game. I'm going to say it's 0. 0.84. 0. 0.83 says Matthew. So Desmos just let me click here and he tells me. Oh. So 84, oh, oh my God, I'm so good at this. Um, I can even zoom in, 8427. Um, that's not the point. That was just for, for the thrill of, of guessing. The point is that if I have a graph, if I have a graph and I want to find f of one, I go to x equals one, and then I look for the I look for the point on the graph that has this hex coordinate, and then the y coordinate is f of one. So where is the y coordinate? It is um, it is right here. It is more or less point eighty four. When you said point ninety one, I thought I was going to agree with you. Then I because I hadn't realized also that every line is point two and not point one. Okay, so that's um, that's what a graph is. Um, that's how we, that's what a graph tells us. Um, and this leads me to, um, to the next point, which is that, so basically you start with, um, you start with a function, you get a, a graph, which is essentially a drawing. But hopefully you remember this from your pre-calculus childhood. Um, if I draw, so here's some axes. And here's one, here's one. And I draw something like this. And then I ask you, what is f of one? In it, so, I mean, in the plane, we also use, we always use x and y for the, um, for the coordinates. So, this is the, the equation of this graph is y equals f of x, which is the same as saying that the y coordinate is um, f of x. Depending on who you talk to, they might tell you that a function is not the exact same thing as a graph. Oh, what's happening? Yeah, our perf all variables. Perf all variables. I thought it was representing some natural log. I don't know what I'm asking. Um, so this is. Oh my god! I don't know what that answer was. Why did I write perf there? I wrote. I just wanted a function that you wouldn't know how to compute with the formula. I just wanted a function you had never heard of in your life, and it's the thing that came from my to my mind. My only point was that we could use the graph to compute the values. Uh, we're, I mean, it's never gonna come up, come up again, um, at least for four months. <clears throat> Is there still, 
other questions? All right. So, um, so I think if I ask you to find f of one based on this graph, which by the way, um, this is called um, the world famous um, the Matt Damon function. Which is a name just as valid as or, um It's it's an acronym. So, what is the demon function evaluated at one? Is it one? Is it one? Um, um, it's not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test there's two outputs for one oh, three outputs someone to remember is their precalculus yeah that was my second guess all right good job yeah so the thing is you 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 find so here's x equals one and then you go look for where the well, which point with x coordinate one hits the function, and what you find is um, three different points. So maybe you have negative 1.5 here, you have one here, and here you have two, it seems. Um, and the thing is, The thing is that this doesn't work. There cannot be three answers. Um, so this means that this is not a function. So, um, so why is this not a function? Uh, basically, because um, because we want to be able to answer the question, what is f of one? And here we cannot answer the question, what is f of one? Because if Pascal says one and Aaron says two, they would both be correct and they would both have different answers and that would just suck. Uh, so we just say that these are not functions and we just decide to work with functions. Does this mean that, you know, does this um Matt Damon well it's not a function. Does this thing uh is it not a thing? I mean it's a thing, it's right there. I could even say it's a thing that answers one point negative one point five, one and two when I ask it what do you speed out of one? But it's just not a, it's not a function. Um Nobody wants to call this a function because that would mean we would have to do calculus with these things and our lives would suck. Um, so <clears throat> functions only have one answer for every input at most. And only have the most one output for every input. Um, they are not functions. So, um, so this is called the vertical line test, like Pascal said. The vertical line test is, um, is what you do when you see a graph. Can I put it here? Yeah. Um, so if you see, for example, this curve 
and this curve and this curve. Um, and this curve where imagine that there's axis. Maybe I should draw axis more. So the vertical line test, how do I perform the vertical line test? I draw every vertical line. And if it only crosses the, the graph once at most, then it passes. And if it crosses it more than once, then that's bad and it doesn't pass. So this uh, graph doesn't pass the vertical line test. This one doesn't pass the vertical line test either. This one does. Um, so I, that doesn't fit in there. <clears throat> so what am I saying? I, I write it down in this in the next slide. The boring function. There you go. I haven't watched that movie. Normally, I just think that Damon is not really copyright. I can't tell them apart. Um, so. If I see a curve and I want to know if it's a graph, I, well, I don't draw, but I have to think of all the possible vertical lines. And if at least one of them crosses it more than once, then that cannot be a function. Um, so that's, uh, so let me go to make a new slide and just write down what I said just now. I need to draw or imagine all vertical lines and check that every one of them crosses the, the curve at least the most, <clears throat> the most ones. If this happens, then this is the graph of a function. So, um, emphasis on at most. So, you can cross it zero times, uh, but the thing is, you can't cross it twice. So, if I see, for example, that's a rather weird drawing. This this drawing here, I picture all the let's say this is one, two, two, all the vertical lines cross this and most ones. This one this line, for example, has zero crossings. But uh, it doesn't matter. Because a function doesn't have to have a value everywhere. Now I close the doors. Where am I? Um, a function doesn't have to have a value absolutely everywhere um, to be a function. So that leads me to the, um, that leads me to the notion of domain. So, um, does anyone remember what the domain of a function is? Or did anyone look to the book this weekend? It's all the possible um, inputs of a, of a function, right? Yeah, exactly. All the possible inputs of a function. So, um, for example, um, 
So first of all, it's a, it's a collection of, it's a set of, of numbers. It's a collection of numbers. Um, A set means the same thing as a collection. Or maybe the domain doesn't have to be numbers, but normally our functions, we like involve numbers. So if, if I have a collection of things, what I can do is then I can, I, I can ask if it's in the, if it's in, in the collection or not. So here, um, one is in the domain. but zero isn't so how um i can know from a graph on the graph um uh an, an x um a point on the x-axis is in the domain if the vertical line crosses the graph and it isn't if the line doesn't cross the graph. So why is one in the domain? Because if I draw the vertical line through one, it crosses the graph. Why is zero not in the domain? Because if I draw the vertical line through zero, it doesn't, <clears throat> it doesn't cross the graph. So, how are we doing? Eight minutes. Okay, so. I feel like there's been a lot of writing and explaining so far. Let's do something that looks like your homework. Um, so what is the domain of of the function? x divided by x squared minus 3x plus 2. I should say, I mean, you're going to see it like this, but what I should really be saying is I should really just draw a line across the paper. What is the domain of the function f where um, f of x is given by this formula. So there's no graph for me to draw the vertical line. Says maybe at the end I'll I'll go write the graph into the calculator and see see if it see if our answer is correct. But I mean, unless I know how to draw a graph from a from a function, which I probably don't remember how to do it right now. Um, I need to figure something else out. Do you factor the denominator? Factor the denominator. Why would I do that? So you, I mean, that is the right answer. Uh, to get um your x values. Uh, well, I mean, sure. Let's factor the denominator. Maybe once we factor it, we'll decide why we were doing this. So, um, all right, the, how do I factor the denominator? X negative one and X negative two. All right, um, American students have like 
magic in their heads that lets them factor things incredibly fast. Um, and I never learned. I mean, I know you, I know you draw some things, some mystical thing, but it doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know what you're doing. Um, but anyway, if you don't have the superpower, uh, let me remind you that there's a quadratic formula that goes goes negative b plus minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a and this will give me 1 and 2 or you know do it in your head um, you need to find two numbers that add to 3 and whose product is 2 I guess I guess you could guess okay so we factor the denominator now that we have done that we know well these two things are, are equal meaning that for every possible x i can think of for example if i make x equals to 247 i know the left hand side is going to be the same number as the right hand side okay i did what you told me oh oh someone answered in the chat Serene said, if the denominator is zero, then the value of the function becomes infinity or not defined. Right. Yeah, that's so. I'm just going to copy what you just said. Um, is zero. That's exactly it. If the denominator is zero, then I can't compute the function. Or it becomes not defined. I wouldn't say it becomes infinity. Um, I mean, this whole course is about infinity, so we can get back get back there later. So um, that's not then. Then um, also, um, so we're so okay. So if I can compute the function. for some x then this x is not in the domain that's the answer matthew yeah so um and also another important thing that you're all you're all thinking but you're not saying it is that if the i mean it's equally important if the denominator is not zero, then I I can compute the function. So every every number that doesn't make the denominator zero is fine. So you just reload it. Okay, whatever. So um, so when is x minus one? times x minus two equal to zero. Well, I wrote it as a product to make, um, did, did the tablet is connected on the internet? Oh my God, you're making coffee, oh my God. Okay. Um, All right, I'm, I'm, I'm back, it seems. Okay, um, so when is x minus one times x minus two equal to zero? Well, I factored it to make my life easier because if the product of two numbers is zero, that means that x, um, one of them has to be zero or both. The, here it's not possible for both to be zero. And if x minus one is zero, that means that x equals one or x equals two. So these are the only numbers not in the domain.
Oh, oh my, um, it's one just in time. So, okay. So, I mean, so what is the answer? So th the answer, this is something see, I tend to be confused about. The answer has to be a collection of numbers. So it has to be some sort of rule that says, these are all the numbers that are in, these are all the numbers that are out. If I say one and two are the only numbers that are out, that I mean, that's that's the answer. Um, uh, because if I know how to answer which numbers are in or out. I could write like Jake just wrote in chat, all real numbers except one and two. You know, I can literally write that sentence. That's the answer. So that that is the answer. That's it. Um, you can be you can be fancier. You could write it like um, Matthew wrote in the in the chat as a union of intervals. So U means union. Remember. So if I say every numbers every number smaller than one, and then every number between one and two, and then every number between two at infinity, not including one and two, that's the same as saying every number except one or two. So all these answers mean the exact same thing. And all these answers are the, the answer for the domain of this function, which is the, is the set of values for which this doesn't make sense. All right, that's it. Uh, so my office hours start right now. So I'm just going to stop the recording if I...